Welcome everyone to a very special Doctor Who event. I am Terry Schwartz, my GN, and I am so excited to be moderating this Whovian dream come true. We all know that Doctor Who is loved across the world by millions of fans in over 67 countries. And for a series that's been running for over 56 years and won over 100 awards, it's hard to find something new to surprise you with, but we tried anyway. So to celebrate all of Doctor Who being available to stream on HBO Max, we have brought together for the first time ever, three of our most beloved doctors, David Tennant, Matt Smith, and Jodie Whittaker for a very special reunion. Welcome you three. Thanks very much. It's so lovely to see you. We're all just casual hang, you know, just <laughs> just dialing in for a, a voice chat. But this, this is your first time being here together to promote Doctor Who. So what is it like uh, to, to be having this event happen? It's a bit fiddly because it's technology based. I wish it I wish it was kind of like more of a high five and a hug scenario, but it is yeah, a pleasure yeah. for people other than the people I live with. <laughs> so it's an absolute <laughs> It's almost like a social a social night out. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be more fun if we were actually together right now. I I would, I would enjoy that enormously. But it's nice to see yeah. some faces in in cyberspace it's very technology it just yeah. it's just uh, you know which i should really say that as a former doctor but i find it very unnerving on all counts <laughs> well i just consider this an iou then that we'll all get to come back together in a year or two right when we all, all can all can spend time together and uh, do this in person um but you know you guys it feels like you join an elite club when you become a, jo a doctor jody it was so exciting to get to introduce you to the world uh, a couple years ago i know you were talking about a lot of the responses and, and texts you got from people like david and matt but do you guys get a chance to talk uh at all together often as doctors is there like a doctor who text thread or something that we all should be very jealous we aren't a part of i'm not in it. <laughs> i'm just worried i'm not on it and there is yeah. i'm definitely not on it yeah. so but we've tried to make that happen yeah yeah you, you know can, you can be admin why don't you be admin Oh, don't make me admin. Sylvester McCoy is definitely admin. I want to. I want to believe that we have dreamed this to life here. Um, <laughs> but, you know, getting getting a little bit more serious. You know, it's it's been really fun um, to get to have all the the seasons together in one place. Get a new audience that's going to be introduced to them through being able to stream on HBO Max. And I'm curious. You know, getting a chance to look back at the series thus far. What is a way that's being the doctor has changed your life or, or impacted your life in a way that you might not have expected before you took the role? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, it, there's there's what you expect and there's what it actually feels like, I suppose. I mean, I think uh, growing up in Britain, you're very aware that Doctor Who has been ubiquitous for all of our lives. Even when it wasn't on TV, it was still one of those sort of cultural things that was just kind of around in a way that, that I think that's sort of spread around the world now. but. But, but certainly when I was young, uh, Doctor Who was just one of those things that was there. So w when you realise you're, it's your turn, you're getting a go at it, you do kind of know what that means in terms of a sort of certain loss of anonymity and a, a, and a fact that the first line of your obituary has almost certainly been written. But um, I, I think that that's different to knowing what it feels like to kind of suddenly... Uh, be carrying that around it's it's it, it's a huge privilege and also feels feels very precious because people love it so much and it means so much to people all through their lives that to be the custodian of that for a while you just don't want to break it you know you just want to make sure that it remains as special and precious and as exciting for the next generation as it did to yours i guess i once had someone shout when i was walking down the street and i hadn't shot a single frame don't break Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I, and when I was announced, like obviously, and you haven't shot anything, have you? I got a, like a girl in a cafe, and I was so excited because I was like, "Here's my demographic." She was like <laughs> sixteen, and she went, "I really wanted Ben Wishaw." Everyone wants Ben Wishaw. Yeah. He would have been great, Jody. He would have been really good. I'm I'm curious. Like it, it's funny. There are terms like timey wimey that I have just incorporated into my everyday life. That <laughs> you know, there there are these iconic phrases over the years from Doctor Who that that take on a life of their own. For each of you, is there one quote that you find gets said to you or quoted to you when people see you more than any other? 
Yeah, people say Geronimo to me a lot. Yeah. Geronimo, back to you, old fruit, I say, and then, you know, yeah. <laughs> Do you? Is that your stand? <laughs> yeah, but that's what's so nice about it, isn't it? That, that generally Doctor Who fans are sort of really sort of just welcoming and lovely and quite enthusiastic and um, they're not booing you. They're not sort of booing yeah. you. It's true. It's a very nice show to be associated yeah. with because people yeah. feel fondly towards it. Even if they're not a fan of it, they tend to feel fondly towards it as a sort of because it's unusual, I suppose, and it's it it's, it has so much kind of history and love effect, uh, attached to it that you you know you get to bask in the reflected glory of that for a while. Yeah, and there's a lot of you're not my favourite, but I really <laughs> like. <it. laughs> yeah. How <laughs> often do you get that? That would not if I saw no. one. It's like someone. <laughs> you get things like you're definitely in my top five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, kind of. I guess transitioning from that, you know, each of you have been a generation of fans point of entry into Doctor Who, right? Like you've you've had an iconic run and there has been a new group of friend, fans who have followed you into the show and then uh, watched, you know, gone back and watched the entire run through that. So I'm curious, once you have become the Doctor, knowing that someone else eventually will play the character, what is your kind of sense of ownership with the role, both while you have it and then for those of you who, who have uh, left the show, like looking back on, on what your, um, your time has been? I think it's because I've never, like I haven't handed on. So I'm still in that strange kind of you know, floating space where I own it. <laughs> and like, I mean, I'm not kicked out of the club yet, but I'm, I think for me, what feels, I suppose, the thing that I would say to the to the next person is the 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 pressure of the history of the show is totally made up in your own head. On set, all the crew that have transitioned or they're they're kind of excited and with you to bring something new because that is the the beauty of this as a role is that. You're not supposed to be recreating what someone did. You're supposed to take it. But you don't, there's a lot of pressure and the kind of actor in a monologue that is there for a long time. But, but once I suppose you're in your costume and you are in your own doctor's clothes and you've got your own friends in it, it feels, it, it, you, in a weird way, all that pressure disappears because it's yours to play with. How about for you, Matt and David? What, what, what is your, um, relationship like with the character now that you know there has been other uh, other people who have taken on the mantle of the doctor since you always know that's coming because you know what you're getting into don't you but it's still there is still that weird bit because like jody says when you're in it it you're like yeah this is it this is it's my tardis it is quite weird that it carries on without you that you can and uh, you know i i was there on matt's first day and of course you're there and you're kind of be and then and then match was up and i we sort of Stay alone, we have a photograph taken, and then I just walk off, and they're all like, right, yeah. next. And then the camera swing around to the next one. And there is some people like, oh, I, I think for a second I felt indispensable. But, uh, <laughs> and I think that's, uh, but then that's how that show works. And very quickly, you just kind of, you, you just get, you know, you, you become part of the history of it. And that's something to be very proud of, I think. I've got that picture, David, and I gave it to my granddad. And I just look really, you're smiling at me as if to say, eh, you've got an idea. And I just look, I look like I'm doing myself or something. I just look so <laughs> nervous. The thing I miss, the one thing, I think we've talked about it, David, before. Like, the one thing I miss is the Christmas special. Yes. Christmas, you, Christmas special. you know, that, that's, you know that, that's just fantastic. And it's always such a great story. But it's, yeah. It's a, and it, it's a great thing to pass on, isn't it? It's a great sort of gift to go, good luck. Yeah. Be good, it, but not too good. <laughs> yeah. Do well-ish. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but it never, and also the truth is it never goes away. I mean, I was this, yeah. I, it's 15 years since I did it, and I'm here today. You know, it never goes away. 
you're you're a part of the history, right? There's always an opportunity by virtue of it being Doctor Who that there are ways to layer everything back in together. Even Evan Captain Jack come back this past season, right? You know, someone who hasn't been on the show in so long. Um, it's very special in that way that I feel like you can keep rewarding people's love of the history of the show and it can build on itself while you also can create something new with each doctor or each season or each adventure you go on with the character. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it can take it. It's got that kind of format that can take endless invention, and it all and, and nothing's wrong. You know, nothing sort of. Uh, if the writing's good, it doesn't. It 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 just adds to the texture of this extraordinary world. Yeah. Universe. Now, I was I was looking to make sure that I hadn't missed any uh, big Doctor Who news. Uh, you know, in in prep for this um, this chance to talk to you all and. You know, interestingly enough, one of the biggest news stories that's come out of the past few weeks is that, David, um, fans are geeking out about spotting a TARDIS in your garden in your new show, Staged. <laughs> People were yeah. very excited about that. Uh, how many Doctor Who Easter eggs do you have around your house, just casually? <laughs> I mean, that's probably it. It was, <laughs> and it's not a real one. We didn't, uh, it was, we didn't like nick it off the set or anything. It's not like Stephen Moffat, you go to his house, it's full of actual stuff, actual booty, like real Tauruses and real weeping angels and things. That's yeah. one my my kids' step granddad made because my kids got very into it briefly and then they moved on like the fickle heartbreakers that they are. Um, so while they were into it, they got a Tardis built for them, which is now just, just, just over there um, in our back garden, yeah. Now, Jody, I assume that you're in your TARDIS right now. That's the the backdrop that we see, right? I've got a coordinator here. I've got. I know it's quite. Uh, now I, I tell you, I've got like, I the, I've got a, quite a few Funko Pops. I think I was supposed to sign them and hand them on, but I think they're quite cute, so I just kept them. But it is a bit weird. Like, ooh, a toy of me. <laughs> Slightly borders on narcissism, I think. Yeah. I've got, look, I've got two Cybermen there. Can you see? Can you Amazing. See that? What have you got? Oh, oh, on the top of the yeah, can you see them? Proper, oh. like, real ones, real ones. Oh, Actual, one not one like, one. they got proper proper Cyber Cyber stamped on the back. <laughs> it, it was, uh, yeah, it was a parting gift, actually. Oh, that's nice. Are they, are the Cybermen your favorite Doctor Who villains? Do you have any particular just no, affection for this? <laughs> but I do like them. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I mean, David, you got to write, you got to write Stephen back and say, come on, you got to get me the real stuff now. Matt has real mm -hmm. Cybermen in this house. No, I'm, I'm quietly furious now. Um, so I did, I wanted to pull some fan questions because I had the opportunity to have the three of you together. So these are kind of rapid fire ones. If you don't have an answer, we can move on to the next one. But uh, with that set up, um, if you had to choose one episode from your run as the Doctor to define that specific iteration of the character, which would you choose? Jody, I'll go with you first because you've had the most recent episodes to pull from. Yeah, I've got la I've got less to choose from, but I'd say I still always feel that it's my first episode. I think it's an incredible way to jump into this adventure for me personally. Like. The, the, the way the character enters through the train, but also continues in Peter's Doctor costume throughout, and then not until the end does, I suppose, like my Doctor arrive. And in that, we've met the family as well, and I feel like emotionally that's the episode for me that is at this point the most special as well. Matt, how about for you? I would say, again, probably the first one, the 11th hour, just because I sort of remember the weird pressure of filming it and my sense of memory when I watch it you know I was um, what we achieved me and Karen and Arthur and the sort of just the anxiety of doing it but actually and and I thought it was a wonderful way to meet a companion and um, I just you know I have very happy memories of that particular time on set. How about you David? I really I, I, I really have a sort of I, I feel it's like it's wrong to choose one's out because yeah. I have such vivid memories it, unlike doing an, any other type of series where one episode sort of bleeds into another because every Doctor Who story is so 
specific and different, with a different cast and a different set and a different world. I, I, I feel like I feel quite disloyal if I choose if I choose any as a favourite or as a as a preferred one. So I kind of kind of have an instinctive aversion to doing it, really. Okay, that's fair. That's a good answer. <laughs> um, another tricky one. So you all obviously have a lot of affection for your own companions, but if you could work with one companion of a fellow doctor, who would it be and why? Who wants to take Rome, that? Rome, because it's Billy and she's my best pal and it'd be great to work with Billy and, you know, I love her. So Rose Tyler for me. I Hey, I'd say Rory for the same reason as I've worked with Darvill and I just, oh, he makes yeah. me laugh so yeah. much that yeah. I just think, because you know what, we know how long the hours and the days are and the months, so it's like, gotta, gotta be a laugh guys, it's gotta be a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's tricky, isn't it? I can I highly would... recommend three no, I would <laughs> I would choose Nicholas Courtney, who was the brigadier, only because I was meant to do a story with him. Um, and the very last thing I did in Doctor Who was actually in an episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures, which would Sarah Jane, who was the companion I'd grown up with, but I already worked with her. And Nicholas Courtney as the brigadier was going to be in it too. And at the last minute, he was too ill to come and be part of it. And it was not long before he, he unfortunately passed away. And I, I still feel very sad that that never happened. So he would be mine. And also, if you could bring any character back on the show, who would it be and why? Ever. Ever. And have them reappear in some way. So I can answer. Go on. Perfect. Well, I'd say, I'd say uh, Grace O'Brien is played by Sharon D. Clark because she's absolutely incredible and also the fact that she was snatched away too soon really emotional <laughs> and and um but yeah and I I feel like that's that's someone I didn't that's a character the doctor didn't get to spend enough time with. I'd bring back yep. William Hartnell who played the first doctor in 1963 and uh and uh I'd bring him back and go look at Still going. <laughs> yeah, still going. We're all yeah. still here. Is he here? <laughs> See what he made of that. I bring back. I can't remember her name, David. Who did Lindsay Duncan play in the in the Mars episode? Adelaide. Adelaide, because I love Lindsay Duncan, and she's still, yeah. I just think she's best. Uh, that episode is so good. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd probably bring her. Back. Now, I, I know we're nice. running out of time, so I do want to wrap things up kind of with a forward-looking question. You know, as we mentioned, Doctor Who is going to reach a whole new generation, uh, watching it potentially for the first time through it being available on HBO Max. So for the rare person who might be watching it for the first time now, what do you hope those new viewers will take away from Doctor Who? What a treat to never have seen Doctor Who and get to watch it now. What a treat. I'd love that. I'd love I mean, to come up with it the first time ever. Yeah, you need to book off about a month of your life because you're going to get <laughs> back and then go in, and then it becomes your friend, and then you start watching it, and you get hooked up in all these different theories, and it's just you know, good luck. Yeah, yeah. It's such a, and like obviously in real time, you've got to wait to see who's announced as the next Doctor, and the kind of ang fan anxiety that's around that. Whereas with this, it's like yeah. just there. I mean, it's it's a matter of seconds from click to click to be able to jump between so yeah yeah i think it's endless and en endless adventures really i know very much. it's been announced that doctor who will be uh back on bbc america with a holiday special uh so i do want to know jody is there anything you can tease us about that no <laughs> <laughs> but i think i'm allowed to say what it's called i'm just going to check i'm allowed i'm going to say it anyway <laughs> I do not say or do say, but Ooh, I say it. Say it. I'll call the Revolution of the Dalek. I that, can't believe you said it, Jody. I can't believe you told everyone. That might that might give a hint. I mean, there may be 
there's a bit of a hint in it, but that's all I can say. Or oh, it said, don't say it, right there. <laughs> Revolutionary War, that's the hint, right? That's, that's no, the hint. No, Revolution yeah. of the Dalek. No, I know. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> like, oh, You're like, no, the Daleks. <laughs> Revolution of the yeah, so um, that's all I can tell you. All right, well, thank you all so much for being here. Doctor Who is available to stream exclusively on HBO Max, and the future season and special will premiere on BBC America. Thanks, guys.